Welcome back to What RT Noobs. This is the Object Travel 7 version 2. It's the Tier 9 Soviet Premium Heavy Tank. It's located on the south spawn of Ensk Counter and is being driven by Marky 12 as an example, or rather a demonstration of what this tank can do to try and help other players improve their game. Now it's got a 122mm gun capable of 440 Alpha and with standard ammo it'll penetrate 258mm of armor and with premium rounds it'll go up to 340. You don't often need the premium rounds unless of course you're in a tier 10 game but most of the time you don't even need them at all. And if you saw in that last battle that we did featuring Marky 12 he managed to last the entire battle against tier 10s didn't fire a single heat round during the entire game. Okay, Ensk, it's a, a game that's actually built, or the map that's built for heavy tanks brawling in the city grounds. The unfortunate thing is that this tank doesn't size great very well, mainly because the turret is actually in the centre of the tank rather than out the front. If it was at the front of the tank, then it might be a better side scraper. Okay, he's got the help of the Panther 2s coming up behind him. And he's holding this corner at the moment. As you can see, the, because the turret's further back, actually, it does make this a worse side scraper. Right in the middle of the tank. The hull's fairly, well, weakish. It's got 258mm of armour on the front of the turret. And he gets the first round into the object, travel 257. But he can only hit the tracks. And now he's going to get a Panther 2 shooting in his side whilst we're dealing with his front. Bad news for him, because our AP rounds are easily able to go through the hull of the... 257 and all Marky needs to do is position himself in such a way as he can get shots on target. He's only using sniper mode when he needs to. Got a low roll there for 359 right through the side. All three tanks are firing at him. This 257 is going to die any second. And it's Marky who gets the kill. Unfortunately we lose the Tiger 1. But he thanks the Panther even so and the the Panther's still in the game. He's lost a few hit points, I think. No, he hasn't. He hasn't lost any, actually. And look at this 53 TP. He's not paying attention. And as a result, he takes his first round from Mikey. Marky, I should say. Who goes up to him, pumps one into him. And because he's trying to face grapple, he's got a tough turret. He's not easily going to be able to get through the turret. He bounces one round from the... 53 TP and this time it's a Yak Tiger 88 who gets the kill shot on the 53 TP. So that's a, a really tough tank, the 53 TP, taken down by other tanks. And he didn't have to use a single round of premium ammo to do it. Notice how he's staying out of sniper view when he doesn't need to be in it. He's got a Tiger P ahead of him. This guy's going to be easy to deal with. He's tier 7 and he's up against the tier 9 premium heavy. And even though he's got two tanks attacking him, including a Kanoni Jagdpanzer, no problem penetrating that guy, taking him out of the game, now he can deal with the Tiger P. And even though the Pantera's turned up, he's only hit the tracks. The Tiger does get a penetration, but now the Tiger's facing two enemies, and the kill shot actually goes to the Scorpion G. Now we're going to deal with the Pantera, and there's two tanks on him at the same time. Panther's with us. Okay, we take one shot and pull. Oh, no, that we didn't get that one in. But the Pantera didn't punish us. And the Scorpion G got the kill on that one as well. With three tanks up on the enemy, still no premium ammo used. He's out of sniper view. Moving towards the enemy, can see his tank clearly, see all around. And if necessary, you can do a quick look behind him to see what's going on. Just hold down his right hand mouse button and turn the mouse to look the other way. But he's back into his uh, standard view. He's found the last few enemy, or rather some of them, including an M445. M445 here, there we go. Puts one into his rear for 443, a high roll. Potentially, he's now got the high caliber. The guy's just around the corner, he's taking damage. He's now one shot. This is for a kill. And he gets it. So that's three kills now for Marky. You can see how good a player he is. Selectively picks off these enemies and he's got this, the help of other tanks to do it. There's only there's only six enemy tanks left now. He's found the enemy RT and the, well two of them actually. One shot's enough to deal with the M12. 
Because of course he's got such a high alpha. One shot's all he needs if he can get it on target. He could use the uh, HE rounds, but instead he's just going to use standard. There we go. Level. Yep. He's got his Pascucci's. Now he's going to deal with the Yak Tiger 88. It's one of the last three enemies on the uh, battlefield. He'll... He does take a pen from the 88mm round. And remember, that guy's got a fast firing gun. He takes another round, but he's not bothered about this because he's got plenty of hit points left over. Punches around through to kill the Yag Tiger 88 with the help of the Panther. And he thanks him as well. That's good comradeship. Out of sniper view now, he's aiming. For, oh, now he's in sniper view on an object 430 at distance. And there's an enemy, object travel 72, over there as well. Can he get shots? Well, the 430 is out of the game. The Panther got him. And now it's just that travel 72. And he's being penetrated through the hull. The turret on this tank is incredibly hard. Although it does have some weak spots in those cupolas. They are relatively small. So difficult to aim at. Okay, Object Travel 72 is behind the building. But he might get a shot any second. Oh, no he doesn't, because he's killed already. And the kill shot went to the Panther 2 again. So he's the one who ends up with that one. Here's the end of battle results, and that was an ace tanker game for Mark E12 in the Object Treble 7 version 2. He got a hand of gold for surviving the battle, having received damage from four different enemies, a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, he got five exactly, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, and a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. He got a Pascucci's, he killed two enemy arty, both of them M12s, funnily enough, and of course, because he got at least six kills, he ends up with a top gun as well. Uh, I suppose he could have got uh, around these if he'd been able to kill those last two the 430 and the uh, trouble 7 version 2 but in the end he didn't really need to he'd proven he could do what he needed to and you saw during that battle he was just about everywhere and even when he was faced by two enemy tanks and then three enemy tanks he still came off okay because they had difficulty trying to penetrate his hull he's got those tough tracks to get through the turret's virtually impossible to penetrate unless you use a premium uh, uh, heat round and you've got a a big enough or good enough gun to do it and so he was able to stand off even against three enemies and his teammates turned up to equalize the scores and of course then they got the kills let's have a look at team score and see where he stood well just look at that he got the highest damage in the game with 5721 hit points of damage that's a really good kill a uh, good good score Second highest was the Object 430 on the enemy team with 3,649, followed by the Maltian on their team, 2,880. When it came to kills, he had the highest number of those with six, double the score of the next highest scorer, which was the Object 430. He only had three kills. Two kills went to the Scorpion, the Panther 2 that was escorting him most of the way, and the enemy Object Travel 7 version 2 also managed two kills. When it came to base XP, yes, it's Marky again, so he's got the top in all three columns. 1,353 base experience points went to Marky. 1,111 went to the Panther 2, who was accompanying him, and very well played by that guy too. Uh, his name is Kofa Security. <laughs> I hope he's not a security guard on, uh, or Kotler Security. I hope he's not a security guard on duty, but if he is, well, well played anyway. And those are the only two players who managed to get over a thousand base in the game. Let's have a look at detail. 16 shots fired, 15 direct hits, 14 penetrations. Damage of 5,721 hit points. All of it done at close range. Nine hits received from the enemy. And they only got four penetrations. That's why he got the Hand of God. And five non-penetrations. And most of the penetrations that did damage to him, well, they didn't do much. 1,340 hit points of damage blocked by armor. Three enemy vehicles spotted. Eight enemy vehicles damaged. Six killed. And he earned 53,826 credits on the game. And after repair and ammunition resupply, took away 49,419 credits profit. 1,353 XP, 102 for this being a premium vehicle, took away 2,132 experience points altogether. So you see, it is possible to ace this vehicle, and it is a very tough vehicle. And if you can work with somebody else and work together as a team, then it makes it incredibly difficult for the enemy to take you down. Because with that gun and you're at that alpha, 440, 
Um, and this tank doesn't have a great DPM, but it's really the, the fact that it does have a very strong turret, a very good alpha damage, a very good pen on the enemy. And so eventually, working in a, pen, in a, in a tandem with another player, you can really do some serious damage to the enemy team and, of course, pull off victories like this. So now we're going to look at uh, one of Mikey's games after he um, took all of this information on board and see how he did. And here's Mike 1963-1 in his version, Object Set Travel 7 version 2, on the south west, south eastbourne of Fjords. And battle has started. I don't think he's loaded in yet because his gun's dropped. <laughs> oh, he has now. Okay. Now, what's he going to decide to do? You notice he's increased the amount of premium ammo he's got to 8 rounds now. He saw Mark, he was carrying 12. And he probably thinks that 8 rounds is enough, but he's selected standard ammo right from the very start. And it looks like instead of going off to the south corner, there's a T-30 and a Heshbarn going down there, and a Lurva, and an Object 252U. So I think he's going to go up the hill, help his teammates up there, try and push through on the enemy cap area, by going through the, uh, the Eastern Pass. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a derivation of the T-10. It's got a central turret, a very tough turret, and part of the body is a cast body as well. So it's very strong indeed. In fact, it's a very bouncy turret, apart from those um, cupolas, which obviously are a bit of a weak spot, but it's mostly the lower plate that you actually need to go for. The top of the, the front of the turret is 258mm of armour, whereas the front of the hull is only a hundred and I think it's 192 if I remember correctly. 132. And it's got sides which are 115mm on the hull, 45 on the rear. It's very weak on the rear, but the sides of the turret are 225. So again, very strong turret. Very able to withstand shots. But no gun depression, 6 degrees, so you have to work on that basis. Either be inventive and try and use uh, uh, terrain to actually give you artificial gun depression. Now you notice he's, um, he's actually using less of his sniper view now than he did before. He is in sniper mode at the moment because he's actually aiming at an enemy target a long way away. It's a T-95 and it looks like r 2 d trying to get shots on him. He raised his rear. There are some other enemies nearby. He's still in sniper view though. He needs to come out of sniper view when he's... Um, no, that's it. He's done it there. When he's not actually shooting, stay out of sniper view so you can move about and see what's going on. And then only go into sniper view when you actually need to shoot. You see, that's the 100% view. He's mapped his, um, his sniper view to times four, but he's flipped it back there to times two. If you use as lanes, you can vary your sniper view depth. Here, there we see he's going up to 10, 25 times there by using his little mouse wheel to increase his uh, view range. That's always a helpful little trick. Now the standard reload for this tank is 13.33 seconds. You can see he's managed to get it to 11.11. .11. And there are some enemies nearby. He did actually, well going up like that actually, Protects him from the T-95, but it doesn't protect him from the enemy tanks that are over in that corner. We know there's a Pajetto 65 scene over there, as well as an FP-4202. And we believe that just around the corner is a Smur SM. In fact, he's got teammates actually shooting over his head at those guys over in the corner. But I think they're just blind shooting. There's an Arty as well. We just saw the tracer of an Arty. I think at this point I would say push through and hopefully your teammates will come with you, especially that Progetto, because he's got the firepower, four shots, able to fire from his gun. Okay, they haven't decided to go yet. They found one of the enemy tanks, but unfortunately the gun elevation is only 18 degrees, so it's a bit difficult for him to get the target. But he guts a shot and a standard round goes through the Progetto 65 and he got his first kill. So you see, it did work. Standard ammo is very powerful on this tank. Okay, he's got support. The Star 1's going for it. The Progetto's going for it. Now's the time to go. The FV4202 is out of position. 
He's over there. He's got a tough turret, so don't... I would say don't aim for his turret. Go with the other guys and support them. You're not going to get shots on him. He's behind rocks at the moment. The best thing for you to do is go forward and help your teammates. Okay, they've come up against that Samur, I think, and he's going to go round the corner. He should come out of sniper view at this point while you're moving forward. That's it, he's done it. Good. He's learned his lesson on that. Come out of sniper view until you absolutely need it. That's it. Come around the corner. Unfortunately, we lose one of our teammates. Now push forward. The samur has gone. Keep pushing. The, the Progetto got him. He's got the firepower to, to take down the Samur. There's the FP4202 now. Aim for the hull. Yes! 474 with standard ammo. It worked. He didn't have to bleed eight heat rounds. You can do it with standard ammo. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Use those uh, chimes, those passes, to actually dive in if you need cover. The FP4202 pumps, pops out too far. And Mike gets his first, ki second kill. Is it third kill? I think it's his third kill, actually, that one. And he's now... Well, he, he didn't come out of sniper view there, but he, had, he did there, yes. And there's only four enemies left. And they're out of position. And now we've got the ELC in the cap area. I think he's going over to find the RT. Yes, he's going across the bridge. He's going to find the enemy RT and put him out. Whereas Mikey is now shooting into the Char Q204, the other tier 9 reward tank. Now notice how these rounds will just carve straight through that Char. Oh, just narrowly missed the turret. Unfortunately, he can't get the hull at the moment, but he can certainly punch that turret. Keep pushing him, pushing. Don't need to stay in the cap. Take out a sniper view. That's it. Now. Yes. Kill. He got that kill. And now he's got another enemy tank up. And he can penetrate that one. Because it's the Conqueror. And he's got virtually no health left. No. Don't aim for the turret. Go for the body. The body. Go for the body. You'll easily pen that. And the Conqueror dies to our Heshbon. And that is the end of the game. And it's a lovely victory. And he asked for good advice, got good advice, and it worked. It worked beautifully. Mike 1963-1 in the Object Travel 7 version 2. Got a third class tanker in that game. He got a jeweler setting down two tanks who damaged him. And I think he had a much better game because he was using standard ammo instead of the premium ammo. And he was using his tank to its uh, good points by uh, pushing on the enemy, uh, forcing them to bounce rounds off him. Uh, let's have a look at team score and see where he is. He didn't get the highest damage in the game. The Heshbarn on their team did incredibly well. That guy managed to get uh, 8,337 hit points of damage from the game. The next high scorer was the Conqueror on the end of the team with 3,634. Aim for the body next time, not the turret. The turrets are tough. The bodies are weak. You can take them out if you hit the body. The third highest damage was the M60 with 3,390 hit points of damage to him. Um, but uh, we can see that Mike did well. He got 1,597 hit points of damage using standard ammo. And when it came to kills, it was the Heshbarn who got the most with five. Three kills went to Mike. Yes, he was the second highest on kills. Two kills went to the Progetto and the TBP T5051. And when it came to base XP, the Heshbarn did the most with 1,167. He got over 1,000. Um, and the next high score was the ELC Evan 90. He was, of course, spotting as well as uh, damaging. And then we got Mike with third with 762 on XP. Very well done. Uh, he's obviously taken on board everything that Marky12 said and others said. And yes, he's now getting the best out of the Object Travel 7 version 2. Let's have a look at detail. Nine shots fired, five direct hits, five penetrations, damage of 1,597 hit points, of which 434 were at more than 300 meters. He received six hits from the enemy, three of them penetrated, three non-penetrations, and he blocked damage of 1,010 hit points of, uh, on his armor. Three, three enemy vehicles were damaged, three were killed, and 233 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 22,200 credits from the game, got 50,000 for completing a mission, and after repair and ammunition resupply, he actually took home 
63,115 credits. Even if he hadn't got a personal mission payout, he still would have made a profit of 13,115 credits. So that lower ammunition cost by using standard ammo really does work for him. He only needs to use the heat if he comes up against somebody that he cannot pen with standard ammo. And you're really going to do that unless you come across tier 10s, uh, things like mice and whatever, or mouse, I should say. Um, you, really, you really need to hold those in reserve and only use the standard AP until they're absolutely necessary. He earned 782 XP, got times two for the first victory, 57 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 2,343 experience points altogether. So if you get asked for good advice on the What RT Noobs channel on their Facebook page, you get good advice. You don't get uh, uh, people teasing you or, or calling you a noob. What you actually get is you get people telling you, do this, do that, you'll get good results and just look at these two videos it shows you how much Mike has actually learned from the information that he was given by Marky12 and others and he's now actually performing much better than he did before getting a profit he's not uh, he's making good decisions and uh, having a good game out of it so I uh, hope you enjoyed both of these replays if you did please give our video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm And thank you for watching.